So I think we really need to work um, in this space uh, to, to create awareness. Um, guidelines uh, uh, is a problem, um, I, th I think definitely, and, and it makes it a little hard sometimes to actually justify treatment uh, as well, right? Because your gut feeling will tell you, okay, I think this, uh, this patient will do well um, uh, with treatment, uh, with interventional treatment. Um, but then we, we don't really have the, the guidelines to actually support that. And I think it will also make it a lot easier for referring physicians if uh, there are appropriate or, or let's say better guidelines in terms of treatment for, for DVT. I guess the problem with both DVT and PE are that no one was really uh, taking ownership of these patients. Let's say they had an orthopedic surgeon who performed some surgery on the patient and then they end up with a DVT. But then they refer to the respiratory physicians or the, the intensivists or the internal medicine physicians and then they would then refer on to you. So people are sort of uh, playing past the parcel with these patients. Same, similar in the UK with DVT, the vast majority of DVT patients um, come in, they get admitted under the uh, medics, they get their treatment low molecular heparin and they're discharged. And then we're finding later on in life that they're getting you know, chronic uh, venous ulcers, they have PTS. 90% are not working in within the first 10 years is, is mad. You know, and many of these uh, patients are really young. Now that we have these tools available to us that I can actually do wall-to-wall -wall thrombectomy, we can extract the clot. We know that we're stenting less, we're um, removing chronic clot more. Um, you know, patients are, have, are, are having less re-thrombotic events. Um, both in the PE and the DVT sphere. Actually, I'm, I'm very grateful for the, the ESC guidelines because it, it was a step in the right direction and I don't think it's fully there yet, but the, I think the authors of it have also had the understanding of leaving things slightly ambiguous. So they've left things like, for example, deterioration not um, very stringently defined. And so we treat, at the Royal London, we have patients admitted um, into the hospital. They're treated with low molecular weight heparin. And then if they are the same as they were when they uh, were admitted, or if they show signs of deterioration, then we intervene. And, you know, they give a vague um, 24 to 48 hour limit. Although, you know, if we see patients deteriorating rapidly, uh, even before 24 hours, we will we will probably intervene. Now, deterioration. We there's so much new literature out there that shows signs that you can look out for in terms of what uh, would be critical in a patient in terms of their mortality or morbidity. And we know like RVLV ratio is a good indicator. You know, if it's getting worse, you, lactate we take into consideration heavily. Um, we take clot burden as well into consideration whether they've got a large or small clot burden. If they have a, a concomitant a DVT, that's also a bad prognostic indicator. So all of these things we take into account um, and we put that in, we take all this data, we discuss it within our PE response team. And that gives us a, a sort of supplementary decision making to the guidance on when we should intervene and how we should intervene and whether we should or shouldn't intervene. We have an algorithm in, in our um, so standard operation uh, procedure uh, that we define together with our um, emergency department uh, colleagues and also intensive care uh, unit colleagues. Uh, we differentiate between, um, according to the EC guidelines, between high risk, intermediate, high, intermediate, low, and low, low risk. But we also do take these additional indicators like lactate, what, what Rashid said, right? Lactate, RVLV ratio, um, high clock burden, central location, bilateral thrombus, concomitant DVT uh, into, into account when, when, uh, when doing treatment decisions. Yeah. And I also think it just in general, the, the general patient status, if you go to the ICU and the patient is sitting upright and is tacky and, uh, you know, okay, this guy isn't doing well. Um, and uh, yeah, just go and see the patient. Right? I think that's like super important.